In this episode, I'll examine Apollo 12 when they land next to the Surveyor 3 craft, which uh, landed and um, was meant to take soil samples and send the, the photos back to Earth. And it was also meant to uh, test how easy it was to land on the moon. Here we have a, a picture from Wikipedia. It's a very nice gentle sloping environment, there's hardly any major rocks, only a few little ones. Just enlarge that. Well, that's the enlargement. And as we lead down from the actual um, Apollo 12 vehicle, we see it's made a very easy landing. It's meant to be about 3.4 um, meters high, but it's only slightly higher than the head of the astronaut. Now he's about 1.8. So that's meant to be 3.4 meters high and an astronaut's 1.8 we've got a problem there's Apollo 12 sitting on the landscape very nicely on the moonscape and everything seems all right now it didn't reactivate after they said a very cold lunar morning because the solar panels couldn't be reactivated but they're looking quite fine there so I don't know what the problem could have been. Let's now start to investigate this a bit more. Let's go back to the original article on Wikipedia and try to see what was actually happening. Okay. Now, it was a third lander of the unmanned surveyor program meant to explore the surface, so it was actually before man landed in 69. As it was landing in a crater, and here we saw the picture was meant to be a very gentle crater, hardly any major rock formations, highly reflective rocks, and again we didn't see many rocks there confused um, the spacecraft's lunar descent radar. So it did have little engines to land. The engines failed to cut off at 14 feet, and altitude as call for initial planes, caused the man to uh, bounce on the lunar surface twice. First bounce reached an altitude of 10 meters. That's a pretty hard bounce. Then it's um, meant to return down the same level intact, three pods landing again. Second, a bounce was three meters. And on the third impact, that's three bounces, it um, managed to stay upright. A very soft landing. It then did its job and scooted the soil. These trenches are up to seven inches deep and photographed. When the first lunar nightfall came, the solar panels are no longer producing electricity. It couldn't be reactivated extremely cold temperatures. But as we see, it's fully exposed to sunlight and solar panels wouldn't be able to generate electricity. So that's the picture we're looking at. That's where it landed, right there. And uh, that's where the Apollo 12 would have been right there. It's funny in all pictures. That's a good picture right there, we'll just enlarge that. Then we'll go to Google Moon. So that just shows that you know there's hardly any drop in this crater, it was very low. And in this picture peculiarly one has gone all the way down to the soil. I haven't seen it anywhere else in any other pictures. So it was meant to be a very gentle landing. It jumped up. It hit three times, third times the last time. It stayed upright and it was a very gentle sloping crater as we see there. There's virtually hardly any crater at all on the picture. And hardly any major rock formations. Okay, now let's quickly go to Google Moon and see what actually is there. And here we have um, a panoramic shot 
southeast of the lunar module. Things are not that very smooth up there, are they? So that's the lunar module there. That's the that's a communication device there next to the module. There isn't anything sticking up from the uh, module in that picture. And everything looks fine. But as we go down to that crater, that's a pretty steep crater. And we find the Survey 3, but it's so steep, there's a very dark shadow. And you'll see that's meant to be the Survey right there. And that's meant to be an upright a shadow of the surveyor in that huge trench. So it landed upright in that trench. There was no problem. It didn't roll. And there hasn't been a problem with it. So obviously it's a bit uh, different to the picture we see from our NASA. There's a, a, a lot of major craters there. Or, um, that is very steep. We'll try to analyze some more pictures, but that is the Surveyor there, and they've actually labeled that as Surveyor 3, right there. Um, that does not look anything like what we saw. I'm not even sure what we're looking at. I can't even see the solar panels or anything on there. I think what we have here is just an upright, turned, a mangled Surveyor 3. And obviously, um, when that happened, and NASA couldn't allow this obviously to be a, a major hurdle, so it had to keep filming and pretending it's fine. And they landed successfully after a bouncing up 10 uh, meters in the air, then landing again, then a bouncing up again, and just a landing that nice flat shot that we see. But that is very far from a very flat lunar landscape. There, let's quickly go to one more picture where they've actually labeled it. This is one more view of a landing site and it looks like something from World War One trenches. There's craters everywhere. Here they've labelled it in this huge crater. And it's meant to be flat according to the other pictures, it's a perfect flat little slope according to them. What we see here a clearer picture, they've labelled it. And look down there, what we see is something that looks mechanical. It's got a round aperture or something like that, right there at the edge of that. Um, that doesn't look like anything like the Surveyor 3. I don't see any solar panels or anything on that. If that's meant to be the Surveyor 3, I'll be damned. It looks like it's been uh, mangled and rolled over and many times it just landed up in there. Why didn't it go all the way? down into the crater, that's even more peculiar, it hasn't been trapped on the rock ledge. And what's that thing there? I should actually in, I take a, a photo and enlarge it, but it looks too much like a, a round aperture, and that looks very mm, mechanical, that doesn't look like any moon rock to me either, right there. Again, this is meant to be that very gentle slope, now we'll return to that picture now. There it is again. It's a very successful landing. There's hardly any slope. And that's the picture taken by Apollo 12. So that's again the official picture. Let's return back and see what the real world holds down there. And this is easy to see yourselves by clicking on Apollo 12. Annotated landing site. So it's not that smooth out there. So obviously we have a problem. Things are meant to land very well. The scientists are meant to be perfect. If this doesn't work, we have a major problem where two years later, a men are meant to land on a very flat surface and come up A-OK. -okay. So if this rolled and it didn't work, they would have a major stoppage to their space program. I think they called in Plan a B. Plan a B was to provide pictures that it landed properly and everything was fine, but I don't know how that thing there could be Survey 3. Have a close look at that.
and again what's that structure down there looks like a wreckage um, I don't think it's I don't think it's a house but that's very peculiar that one and it's very uh, bumpy there's very peculiar rocks everywhere and that's meant to be the space uh, module there Apollo 12 um, that looks like the real ideal as opposed to the other picture that's on landscape and that's meant to be the view that we saw before if you remember we saw the view where this was perched on the hill it looked like a very gentle slope and from there we had no problem of actually standing probably there when the photo was taken we had a clear view all the way up to the space vehicle and it was a very gentle slope obviously on this picture it's not the same now that doesn't look like just a normal rock there it's a bit peculiar that one it's too shiny can we see any of this on the official photographs let's go back and have one more look this is the picture there so obviously there was one other person taking a picture from behind it's a very gentle slope we don't see any of those structures that I outlined that are very bumpy or don't look natural it's very clear there's hardly any craters anywhere from that picture and the more we zoom into Apollo 12 there Just seems like a, a mangled cockroach there in that picture. It doesn't seem like the one we saw, full of colour. You see what I mean? And that's virtually flat. But the one we saw opens up like a um, umbrella, and that one looks like a very flat surface there with the antenna. Um, as I as I said again, if you look down the slope, there's hardly any craters. We come down to here, it was a perfect landing, and uh, we meant to see a very large seven inch scoops right there, but that looks very rough. They're meant to be nice and nice and straight every time it's scooped up soil, because there's the actual arm that extends out. I don't see any nice straight scoops there at all. And from our data is about 3.7 meters high. So again, in this picture we see hardly any of the real surface that the other picture has shown. It's meant to be a perfect soft surface. This is the official satellite picture of it meant to be right there in that crater. But on our picture it's hardly any crater at all. This is the official data. And um, the three foot pads it meant to extend out 4.3 metres from the centre of the surveyor. That's each foot pad. Well, it looks a lot smaller in the picture. It's meant to be 3 metres tall. Well, it's only a little bit more tall than the astronauts. It's about 1.8. Um, a few seconds before the touchdown, the radar's, the radar's lost lock apparently due to high inflections switched in emergency control mode occurred three times 20 meter distance between the first bounce and the second bounce and spacecraft slid about 30 centimeters from the final touchdown it said it only came to rest on a 14 degree slope inside a subdued 200 meter crater that looks a lot more than 40% of what we saw. Again, the 14% gentle slope produced such a um, huge shadow if it's only 14%. That to me looks like 45%. And that's meant to be the craft, and that's meant to be the um, umbrella shape, which curves gently. Um, that's got very 
pronounced sidearms and does not look very shriveled like the one in the other photo. Yeah, make up your own mind. <laughs>